try once more. Uh, when I was young, when I was in grade four, I, I, I started running. I was hearing about the uh, like child, Kano. And I said, I want to try. So I tried when I was still young. I was grateful. Then after that, I continue. And then I, I saw it's going well. Then I said, let me try to run 10 kilometers, 15, half. Then afterwards, I, I tried marathon. And it was good. <laughs> yeah, I go like that slowly. Okay. Yes. So she began, I think the first she was doing 400 meters. And then gradually she went for 800, 1500 meters, 3000, 5000. Because where I met her the first time is when we were running 5000 together in national. Uh, so we were, because we were from this region, and we were doing the, it was trials in Nairobi. She was doing 5,000, I was doing 5,000. And uh, she managed to win in Nairobi, and I was second after supporting uh, Some of you might be knowing Agustin Jogi, Castas Jogi. And then she went 8,000. That's when now she started going out to run outside the country. It was around 2004. She started doing 10k, 5 kilometers, and track. Up to that was 20, 2000, 2007. She had started fasting half marathon, where she ran 60, yeah, 69. That was uh, it was Nice in France. Mm -hmm. And then from there, so we, and then she went uh, to do a lot of half marathons up to 2014 when we were in Netherlands. We were doing, we, we were doing Palim, eh, 25 kilometers. We discussed about the marathon and we were like, let us attempt. So we started in 2014 to do the first marathon, Palim. And she was fourth, eh? Yes. yes. With a time of 228, first marathon, 2014. From there, she started now enjoying. So, because after that, she was like, "I'm not going to do the marathon again." <laughs> so I had to wait for like two hours to recover with the massage, <laughs> and then I started now working on the brain to try and, you know, bring her back. That marathon is good because the legs, everything, you know, she was not even moving. Eh? So I had to carry, assist her together with the best director of the race director of uh, Palin Marathon. Then we were like, "Hella, please." Uh, after a week, recovery, we started talking five kilometers here, ten kilometers, and she was like, ah, seems marathon is not part. Eh? <laughs> that is when now we started, she went for Seoul, Seoul in Korea, and she was, she was, yeah, she won that race. <laughs> and now she, Ella started enjoying the marathon. We went again the same race, where she was second in in that race, Seoul. From there, she has been doing, and then Germany, Frankfurt, yeah? for those who know Frankfurt, she was also doing what? So she started enjoying Barata, up to now. You were talking about the mental aspect, yes. especially the marathon, being yes. very long, or maybe. Yeah. Do you, how, how do you approach a marathon? Do you have like, do you split the marathon up in parts? When, and when you're running, do you think about I do first 10k, 21? Is there an approach mentally how to uh, to the marathon? Like how 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 you do it? Maybe maybe everyone has a different idea yeah. about it. At first, when I saw uh, I ran uh, I ran that one in 10 kilometer, then I say I. Um, I want to take at 67 in half marathon, and then uh, I did, and then I say I want to try marathon now yeah. because already I have uh, meet my target. Yeah. And then uh, I try the marathon. Yeah. And when you're doing the marathon, as you're running in the marathon, do you what do you think of mentally? Do you think of anything to give you power or strength or to 
make it easier to forget the pain? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you do? Yeah, sometimes do because I, I, I love uh, gospel music. Sometimes when I, I run a marathon, mm -hmm. I, I sing when I am going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes in, in, on the road, you, you meet some people singing yeah, and people waving. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going as if I, it is not hard. Yeah. So I'm singing, thinking about um, uh, not far. Yeah. Not 42 kilometers. Mm -hmm. It's, it's near. Yeah. A little bit ahead. Yeah, yeah. You don't think about the finish. You think little yeah, steps. Yeah. Uh, um, I think as if it's not far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is uh, that's why we were talking of mental preparation. Normally, when you are doing long run, you have to prepare yourself, also. and more so, you have to encourage yourself. Either you use music or uh, you text, because what you have to concentrate on, you should be having that positive thing in your mind. You forget about negative. You forget about anything that can make you, you know, something that maybe negative in the past you've done something that can make you because the moment you that thing strikes in your mind you lower the pace you find yourself you are in a group you are running well but all of a sudden when something strikes on your mind you find yourself you are losing so much of it you have to put yourself in that mind positive in your mind and you will you try as much as possible to take it don't focus on the 42 forget about that so you say, I want to cross this 5K. So you focus on the 5K. Because already you have the time split. Eh? But maybe you are supposed to cross at, cross at 14 minutes. So therefore you work on 5K. Forget about it. And then now you say, I've crossed. You check that time split. Perfect. You say, now focus on the 10K. Focus on the 15K. 20. 21. You know, and the goodness as you pick also water in every five kilometer barrier, picks water. So you concentrate to those areas also. You take the advantage. You push, because that is where we normally gain from. When you are remaining like one, one kilometer before the marathon, before the water station. water station, you push. You make that, you accelerate a bit. You pick that water and then you run another 500 meters before you. Yeah, you do. And then you train slowly. And you find the marathon will be a bit easy. Provided you have the right gears and you have the right mileage also. Eh? But you see, that is why you see even concentration of value to jog it. The way it goes. It's much of brain. You forget about negative. You take it easy. As if you are just finishing in the next one kilometer. With training partners, or do you do lots of your training on your own? Yes, we have a group, eh? yeah. but normally I have some pacemakers, and sometimes I'm the one doing it. But sometimes, like 2018, I was supposed to pace world record, Pekele, remember in London? So I was preparing, and she was finishing in London 2018. So we were, uh, I had my own program because the time split of world record is different. And also I was um, working on Ella. So I had to look for some pacemakers to assist her, follow the time split. At the same time, I was focusing. But unfortunately, we went for five kilometers per gallon, dropped out. So I had to look for another group, Abel Guru and some guys and assisted them, you see? Sometimes you can, uh, do everything, eh? but something small can disappoint. Yes. So after you had your kid for two months, you didn't run, you only went to the gym. Did you find it was difficult to start running again? Or like, do you find now you're stronger? Or is it is it more difficult? It's a difficult question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, after two months in the gym, I started jogging, but it was it was easy, not like the other time. So it was easy, yeah. Okay. It was not easy. So you took it easy and yeah. then okay. Then now started slowly, gym. 
for two months and then choking where you use like six eight minutes per kilometer for 5k then after the next week for 10k using that to maintain eight even 10 minutes 10 minutes is a lot but within our short period of time she had energy remember ladies have advantage over us men eh? when they come out from leave post record because <laughs> a lot of blood and strong <laughs> energy yeah i think one of the most exciting ends to a marathon was the 2015 Beijing World Championships um, where you were fourth with 200 metres to go and then third and then second with about 60 metres to go and you almost passed the Baba and then she just edged away again. So you got a brilliant silver but did you feel that you'd lost the gold or that you'd gained the great silver? I came because uh, It was, it was not easy. Not easy? Yeah, <laughs> because uh, we were all together uh -huh. and then I had a problem with my shoe. Right. So at the last minute I saw it's not easy, I tried my best, but uh, I was able to go, so I didn't think of, about second position. I thought maybe four, five people. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing towards the end with your massive sort of stride that you've got that you're gaining on the Baba and then at the last second she just pulled away again but it was a brilliant brilliant race to watch fantastic yeah. really good mm -hmm. so you had you said you had pacemakers in the races but in in training as well yeah. you have like yeah. team yeah. to help yeah. yeah so we work as a team because much of it is like what you're doing now because Kenyan experience is a teamwork builder so for you to be successful in sports, if you work as a team, you make it easier. But if you work as an individual, you take a long route for you to achieve. So that is the secret that we that's why you find in Italia we have groups. So like us, I walk around to assist those ones. And we have those ones who are in, maybe still in primary school, high school, and those ones who are already, the, you know, doing commercial races. So we try to make them again, uh, you know, because we work on maybe one program. So we assist them with pacemakers so that they can assist them to at least push a bit. More so in the truck, long run, and fat lip. Yeah. But when it comes to easy, they, ca they go on their own. Yeah. You join the, the like group fat leg Thursday morning or Tuesday morning? Mm, you, know, you know, we have more than 26 groups here. In, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just, not so, so but <laughs> what we normally focus is, you know, the race. When are you racing? Because you have to have a different program. Because maybe you have one month to the race, so, you, you know, you require a certain mileage, work on speed work, then mileage, perfection, check on the speed, he'll work a bit because of endurance, yeah. Has Hela got a race coming up soon? Yeah, she'll be doing Copenhagen mm -hmm. Marathon, yeah. She was invited for that race, it will be on May, yeah. yeah. And then after that now we go back to the majors. Because she was like, let me recover first, when I'm, then I can begin to go uh, that race, and then after that, she go for the major. So we were suggesting whether we, she should go back to Boston or, or in New York. Copenhagen's a great race. Yeah, yeah I found Copenhagen. Yeah. yeah. I didn't win. Close. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or we organize you one pace. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just an easy pace. Yeah. 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 But we shall work on 218. 218. 218. Okay. So therefore, I'm up for the challenge. Three o three o six per kilometer, three or six. Is that what you're going for? For what, what pace what time are you going for Copenhagen? Yeah, that is what you have to do. Two eighteen. Yeah. Oh.
<laughs> so when you are doing <laughs> focus on that. Yeah. Um, um, Hella, how as you've developed um, as an athlete, because you've already got you know, you spent a long time racing and um, you have a lot of longevity in the sport. How has your program changed? How's your training adapted as you've developed? So. <laughs> Um, maybe I can say uh, you learn every day. So uh, since I start running every year, every let me say every day or every week, I I gain experience. So <laughs> I've never uh, finished that experience. Every day I gain. How about like your mileage? Have you changed your your week, your average you know, volume that you're running? Are you running more now uh, than when you started uh, running you know, marathon, um, or is it less? Is it is it different? Um, I think now I'm uh, running more, yeah. not like before. How how many kilometers per week do you run um, roughly? Approximately two hundred. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. 200 plus, yeah? Yeah, yeah. No wonder you need four hours sleep after each session. Yeah? A lot of sleep as well? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think about it. Yeah. Well, because for sure, at high level, the most important thing is rest. So she has to forget everything. And every focus she has is just training. After training, you have to have total sleep. And when we mean of total rest, is when you don't food put earphones, you switch off everything and you, you sleep totally for you to recover well, yeah. and then you drink water, a lot of water because you lose, like right now the weather is extreme a bit so you need to take a lot of water yeah. and then you rest, I have massage three times a week after every speed session, massage after long run have a massage because of the muscles and that is and then don't forget vegetable <laughs> vegetable does wonders when it comes to that. and the seafood eh? especially the fish you eat fish but when you're in Kenya here you can eat liver liver from the coat so sheep and the eggs for the protein, eh? remember somebody like us, he needs a lot of protein. So we use eggs and then uh, milk. Peanut butter? Milk. Plus yeah. peanut butter? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but maybe after winning now the race, you can take on that same day, no problem. The first one week after the race, you can eat. But when you resume to the training, you forget all the other because you remember, you, for you to run well, there is a certain weight you need to be at. That's a fact. For you to run well, there is certain kilos you need to have. Otherwise, you cannot manage that. Whether you have the latest tissue, the latest t-shirt, the latest cap, those one cannot make you win. Are you getting okay? Yes. So you have to. Yeah, that's why we, we normally check so that to reduce the training or you reduce even the attire because you might be wearing the sweat proof. Yeah, you reduce, you have the right attire so that you can maintain. So 50 kilos about the right weight at the For the ladies, yeah. So I want also to say this. It is good also to understand your body. Maybe you are tall, your weight is different with other people. Yeah. yeah, if you understand your weight, it's okay. Not feel like me or for two, <laughs> it is different. <laughs> yeah. You have Copenhagen in May. Have you started some specific marathon work ready for that race now? Or still mileage? What's your training right now? Yeah, I think I've started already. 
Yeah. 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 Hard, hard. Loading, but it is uh, understandable. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You think you can run 218? You think it's possible? No, but uh, yeah, I, I know it's. The course, I think it is uh, not easy. But I am targeting to, to go with the ghost record. Yeah. Yeah. What was the ghost record? 229. Is there extra, extra prize money if you get the ghost record? You get extra prize money if you break the ghost yeah, yeah. record. Yeah. 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 Bonus, bonus for the ghost record. Yeah. 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 Bonus. What's your um, typical pre-race preparation? So, what 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 is your preparation on race day in terms of food, sleep, uh, hydration, warm up? Yeah. Before the race. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Normally, the last two weeks before the race, that is where she need to reduce work on certain areas, like we do speed work once, and then uh, she has to hit well. Recover well. When I mean recovery is total sleep. And then uh, before the race, because they, they normally allow us like uh, four days, five days in the race. So she has to work on the just this sort of, uh, uh, I can say, fat leg track when the babies or mother races, they don't have track within the. starting point so you have to maybe look even for one kilometer a stretch eh, so that you work on that to alert just your body so you can work on the long strikes easy you do the exercise and then uh, massage and then you take water whether you have some uh, uh, supplements like uh, this most of the people use because they have different companies eh, based on the advice from the race. Maybe you are allowed to take because some use different and more No more The current one they are using is more But some even they don't require that. And then you work on the focus on the race. But before that race, the following day, you have to sleep more than six hours. When you do your long run, do you take Morton or do you have no food, no gels? Like, um, do, do you take energy drink or not? Uh, it depends. With, uh, like me, I don't use uh, Morton in Okay. Yeah. I use, yeah, with, like... Honey? Oh, right. Yeah. Mostly I use honey. Like honey and water or just, just honey? On the, on the honey with water. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you see, honey has a lot of uh, energy. For those ones who know about honey, the natural honey we get from the peas, yeah. it is the best. It is the best. Wow. You will remain strong up to the finishing line. <laughs> How many uh, marathons do you do a year? Yeah. Yeah. Two times. Two times. Yeah. <laughs> and what was your most difficult race of marathon? Which one? Mm. Mm. Uh, the Olympic? Mm. In Brazil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very hot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have you have quite a big focus on your diet. When you have a race that's abroad, like when you go to Copenhagen or London, do you eat the food there or do you bring your own food? So I, I, I can take my food some, but I eat there also. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was speaking with um, Mary Bittani. She said she makes, um, she brings her own Ugali and makes it in the hotel. <laughs> do, you, do you do the same? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. And, but sometimes I go out. Yeah, okay. I also, yeah. <laughs> no, when you check Ugali, it has a lot of calories, eh, energy, compared to this 
other foods from so we normally get it uh, flour from Kenya here but you see these big races measures they normally give you a room with a kitchen and everything because before they invite you they give you a list you you have to everything that you need you fill that list so that they can allow you and they can organize everything that you want so that is and even the aeroplane they allow us to carry this That is the advantage of these big races. So, but when they are there, they are not the ones cooking. Even in 2018 and 2017, I was cooking for the Mary Kate and Hela. <laughs> and uh, all Kenyans, eh? it was all Kenyans. I was the one cooking for them. <laughs> because I was the coach, so I told them I need everybody to sleep. More so because. Uh, that was the time Mary Kay time rain 2017. So I was the one cooking because I told mm -hmm. them my work here, despite I'm pacing the following day, I have to use my energy to make sure that so that you get the total energy for the marathon. So I had to chase them, cook once the food is ready, I was the one looking their doors, come and eat. Yeah. And that is also teamwork, eh? For you to achieve, you need to work as a team. Because if one of you wins, the entire the Kenyan experience have. Huh? For example, if this guy will pace well in Copenhagen, <laughs> the entire team will have won the race. Yes. Yes. Imagine, eh, because you might be shocked to see Hela together with him, they are winning the Copenhagen. Are you getting the point? So there will be celebration from the Portugal everywhere because they know him and they know Hela. And the entire team is the Kenyan experience. Am I right? Yeah, Kenyan yeah. experience. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.